From a base coat of Wraithbone Spray, paint the entire model with Playbearer Fresh Contrast. I went with two layers of this paint to get a nice finish on the flat areas. Avoid the temptation to just do one very, very thick layer, as you'll get still thin on the raised areas, but too much paint in the recesses. Make sure the first layer is completely dry before painting the second layer. Pick out all the boils using Dorn Yellow. Um, this is a layer of paint, but it will cover fairly well over the light green, but you may need two layers, particularly on the larger boils. Wash these areas with a one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and an in yellow contrast, allowing it to spill over the sides of the larger boils and in between the smaller. Paint the horns with a base coat of Screaming Skull. Paint the distal part of the horns with Gorthor Brown. On this model I attempted to use kind of jagged lines to give the transition of colour. It doesn't really work on horns this small, so to do it again I'd probably just use successive layers of washes to darken towards the tips of the horns. Repeat this on a smaller area with dryad bark. To finish the horn, paint the very tips with a batten black. Paint over the mouth with Flesh Terror's Red diluted with a little contrast medium, um, making sure it flows into the recesses as the teeth will be picked out next. Paint all the teeth then using Xandri Dust.
paired the bottom part of the top teeth of the top part of the bottom teeth with screaming skull. Again, on details this small, this attempt at transition color doesn't really show up, um, but it's good practice if nothing else. Paint the eye or eyes, depending on the model, using Uriel Yellow. Paint a line down the middle of the eye as a slit iris using a baden black. Pick out the sharper edges of the model using Cree khaki. On flesh, less is more when it comes to this, I suppose, pseudo edge highlighting because too much of it will make it look more like armor panels than smooth skin. Um, and as well as that, on details such as around the eye and on the face, it's no harm to do thin layers, but do more than one as opposed to one thick layer, as this will look very, very stark. Likewise, pick out any of the raised areas on the folds of the skin or anything around the boils or anything like that that you feel needs a bit of highlighting. At this stage I decided to wash the bone areas with separate from sepia to tone down the bright white colour of the screaming skull. The last step I did then was to go back to the larger boils and glaze over door and yellow just in the centre of these to give more of a transition of colour. In the smaller ones this probably isn't needed, um, but up to yourself. This is the finished result. If you like this video, feel free to check out the channel where I have numerous other painting tutorials and please subscribe if you want to keep up to date with newer videos.